my review of the Toyota Yaris T-Sport 1.5 VVTi. She is the Mark 1 P1 first generation of Toyota Yaris T-Sport. It's showtime. I like about this gear knob is how it's designed because no matter what pace I'm at, it's really quick to grab it and go for whatever gear I want. So it's quick to go left, right, forward, back. It's really well shaped for the hand. Like you're going at a faster pace again. It just makes sense. However, this is designed in Toyota, it just makes sense. Let's take a look at that. You need to be aware of when you hit that button, okay? A lock the car. If you haven't opened the doors or the boot, the Yaris automatically should lock the doors. What happens is if I lock the car, nice, nice sound. Unlocker. I can't imagine in any way, shape, or form how you'd end up leaving your keys in the Yaris T Sport and then the Yaris auto locking herself. The reason why I totally do this is just because, let's say, I'm, but I've, I've unlocked her. So I've gone to the Yaris T Sport, I've hit the unlock button, I'm doing something and I've forgotten something. And I just tried to walk off, but I forget to lock her. So she locks herself so that the Yaris T Sport is safe and that your belongings inside her. That amber warning light there is to let you know that the handbrake is still on. Take the handbrake off, the light goes off. I love the front and rear bumper with the side skirt that was bolted onto the Yaris T Sports. Suits the existing bodywork down to the ground. It just looks fantastic. The T Sports aerodynamically, the bodywork is designed to slice through the air as efficiently as possible. And the T Sport alloys are. Oh, Perfection. Well done, Tyler. T Sport badge at the front to share the Toyota port. Like the teardrop design. It's kind of Japanese. As for the design of the Aris T Sport, I love Toyota's beautiful, elegant body lines. I like the shape of the car. I think for its time, it looked absolutely beautiful. I liked how Toyota have modernised the design when they made this car. This isn't me being opinionated. What I'm doing is I feel like. I have not seen a good review of a Yaris T Sport or a Toyota Sport. Because I own one, I should review it. And about why I own this and why I'm so happy with it. Here's a metallic blue. When she was in the factory, that would have been an optional extra. The metallic in the blue paint does stand up quite a bit in the sun. It does look quite sharp. Toyota. Corrosion protection on this car is fantastic. This is a 14 year old car and she has barely any rot underneath proven by when you put her up on the ramp you don't see any corrosion she's really tidy underneath as for how the Yaris T Sport drives she's a fantastic motorway cruiser she'll be able to accelerate quite quickly to overtake traffic to get you where you need to be in a hurry you get good feedback from the steering the ride is very comfortable yet sporty you could drive this car to Scotland and the car wouldn't care and you wouldn't have a broken back and you wouldn't feel uncomfortable the Aris T-Sport will just eat up motorway miles for country lanes, small roads. She's a beauty to drive. You get really good feedback from the steering when you might be starting to lose grip when you feel the you feel the road through the steering. She is quite quick on small roads, but she'll get you where you need to be in a hurry. For round town, she's very frugal, very nippy. She'll park in spaces big cars cannot of her class. And you are able to fit reversing sensors to these cars as well because technology has moved on and I don't mean you have to drill a hole in the bumper there's different types of sensors now you could put in the back of that bumper and you'd have rear reversing sensors so all around she is fantastic the mpg of the Toyota Yaris we'll get nearly 40 mpg from her with the Yaris's, with the smaller engines and the diesel ones you get nearly 50 mpg and that's considering the fact that these days we have Econism, Econer, stop start technology, small, small engines that are supposed to be really fuel efficient. Yet yeah, this car has a bigger lump, and back then, to make an engine fuel efficient, to make you get good MPG, engineers had to really think about how they built that engine, the skill of the engineers, the skill of the designers, and yet yeah, it's kicking out that, and it's only 14 years old. 103 brake horsepower, which I know sounds small these days, but back then, 
plenty of power. These can be remapped, retuned more. She's 130, 143 foot pounds of torque. T-Sport alloys, they really do suit the Yaris right down to the ground and give her presence when you're driving about. Ventilated discs on the front, quite a big caliper. It's these, they're called brake shields. It has several functions on this car. The first function is it acts as a heat deflector for the hub assembly and the wheel main bearing. What that means is, so behind here you have the brake disc and then you have this brake shield, brake dust shield, whatever you want to call it. And what it does is as heat's generated on the brake disc, it's going to reduce as much as possible the amount of heat going from the brake disc into the hub, the hub assembly, the main wheel bearing. What that's about is durability, making the wheel bearing and the components of the hub assembly last as long as possible when reducing how hot they get. Our performance racing cars do it and have these great big massive also act as a protection for the brake disc and the pads from the crap on the roads basically designed to stop stones grit whatever possible from getting in between the disc and the pads which could produce your braking performance water probably the reality is it doesn't stop it doesn't stop any water going between that disc and those pads because it's just not physically possible but it's designed to try and stop that. If you ever take the brake disc on the pad off, you'll notice how, how this is designed to be a... Don't ask me how. Somehow when the wind tunnel it works. It acts as a airflow channel, a way of channeling air. What that means is, as you're driving along, air is somehow going around the caliper and it's going in behind the brake disc. What that's going to do is, what I've noticed and as I've worked on cars myself, my time on this earth, is that a lot of manufacturers, unless you're getting into supercar territory, tiny weedy big shields on the, the hub assembly, these tiny pissy things on there, Toyota and Mercedes-Benz, please. Put these these great big thick gigantic brake shields even when i've taken my car to the garage they've said exactly the same they're surprised for the amount of cars they've seen with tiny players and then they meet my car and go god damn those are big a car of this class and size that big we have a red toyota badge to show this is the yaris t-sport toyota have done everything they can to keep the brake disc cool, this is self-cooling. The little things like the ventilated disc and will aid in, in cooling. Keep the main wheel bearings cool, the hub as durable as possible. Always the little things that, that count. Floating calipers. So what that means is if you're at any kind of angle, if you're going down a hill or something, this caliper is going to have a really slight movement in there so that it is as close to the brake disc as possible when you decide to brake. And Toyota did not skimp on the brakes in this car. At all. The side skirt, that mat is colour coded to the car. You have a rubber seal on it to stop water getting underneath that could cause corrosion. One thing I do like about Toyota is, is the protection. She's been through dirt roads and all sorts. She actually, she's beautiful underneath. The disc on the back, BBTI. Variable valve timing with intelligence. You have fog lights on the rear of the Yaris and reversing light. What this is, is a TT back box. She would have been optional extra in the factory and it does give her a nice deep noise. Toyota Sport badge to tell you this is the Yaris Toyota Sport. All this stuff was fitted in the factory. TT spoiler. You can see on the back of this when it wasn't painted that it has TT stamped on it. So what that means is Toyota Team Europe back in the day managed to get to fettle with these cars, they got to play with them, do whatever they wanted to them. It is bloody cool. You have this grip. Can you shut the boot? Which is a nice thing for them to do. you got quite a bit of space in the back. Total boot capacity is 205 litres of space. Get access to the rear bulbs to replace them is really easy. You just pop this panel off, pop the bulb off and job done. These use capless bulbs. Be aware of that if you decide to get your T-Sport. You can fold the rear seats down. You can push the back seats forward for more space. Actually, 
for a small car, you got a lot of space. And no tidy plastics. This really nice rear end. I added these to give the sound system a bit more immersion. But if I didn't have them, I'd be very happy with the sound quality as it is. She has a 45 litre fuel tank to fill her up from empties, nearly 40 pounds of premium fuel, she's about 42 these days. It's beautiful how everything's laid out, you can see how tight, it didn't skimp on anything. I think on this car feels quality, even the white dials seen a lot cheaper but it didn't wait. They didn't skimp, I'm sure they had an entire team dedicated just to those dials, look at them. The detail, and that's what's important here. Everything the driver needs is illuminated. I love the, the colour scheme, the, the lighting scheme they have on this car. Everything's really airy. It's really a nice place to be. This car tracks beautifully. She's so effortless to drive. I mean, the car does, the Yaris T Sport doesn't ask anything of you. You just drive her and drive her and she's just really nice to drive. Now we should enter the interior. Oh. Good cloth material. It's really a nice feel to it. Nice feeling plastics. These here, you have carbon fibre panels here. You have electric window windows either side. If you push that button in like that, it's one touch system, so the window will wind down automatically without you having to hold this in, which is really useful for car parks. Door lock for the boot and all the doors, just for those situations where you don't feel safe. They do happen. This will lock the electric window on the left hand side. This is just more for children. Very nice panel. That is to show that this is the RST Sport. The interior was upgraded in the RST Sport. If you didn't have the T Sport, you'd be very happy with the interior Toyota built for the rest of the Yaris's. Sport seats uh, on a long journey if you're having a bit of fun. But whatever driving situation you're in, these will hug you in. They won't let you slide about. It's really comfortable for a cloth. And these are standard as well. You have adjusters for the tilt of the seat. Same for the other one. You can pop that to push the seat forward. This thing. I saw a side bag for a side impact. You've got a lot of cubby space in this car. One thing that surprises me is the cubby spaces. They're everywhere. Crazy tire. You have a clutch foot rest, which is a godsend on any kind of journey, especially the motorway, because that saves you having to keep your foot upright like that. And I have had, oh, I've had to do it before. It hurts. So that's a really comfortable feature for the driver. Decent feeling pedals, you do feel the clutch with the, the clutch pedal. You have electric windows, left and right, you can adjust them whichever way you want. Adjusters for the headlights, nice creature comforts for the driver. There's a speaker for the door. Now we shall enter the Yaris G Sport. <laughs> oh, I'm comfy already! I haven't done anything yet. So the Sport is a really nice curvy dashboard. Interior is quite light in here. It's not a bad place to be. It's a really comfortable place to be. The controls are within arm's reach, and it's not a bland interior. I love these little touches to it I've done. The door locks, the paint them silver. If you look at these, they have little grips in them, just to make sure you can turn the, the switches. Sport steering wheel. For a small car, it does a decent job. The coolant system is designed so. You the engine will not overheat in heavy traffic or on a hot day. So two contrasting colours only. The T-Sports, especially the MR2 has got these. So they're for the driving sensation, they are for feeling the road. It's really nice to feel, it's really nice to handle. Air freight level as well, more expensive to produce at the time. And a Toyota badge there to let you know this is an OEM part. This is what Toyota fitted to the car. Not some aftermarket part, which would be shit. You've got little grips in the steering wheel. For any kind of driving, it makes you sure you have full control over the steering wheel. And it makes your reactions quicker. Would have just made the steering wheel more expensive for Toyota to produce. Nice little finned air vents. I like them. And quite a spacious for a small car. I fitted a pair of Bluetooth kit to this car. Just because the electronics can handle it wasn't problematic, you just need to know how to solder. You have a floating binnacle in the centre. You have sporty white dials, which is only for sports cars, performance cars, the sport model of that car. I've redlined this engine a lot of times. And the engine just doesn't care. The Toyota engine just does not care. It really doesn't. You could redline a whole day, she wouldn't blow up. There's your speedo.
have a little coolant light gauge, whatever. Over there, it means the engine is cold. Do not rev her over 4000 RPM. And don't be harsh with the acceleration, because all you're going to do is cause more wear on the engine. Basically, that's down to the fact that the oil is cold. So think of it as a sludge. Think of the oil as a sludge in the engine, a sludge right now. And when it's warmed up, it turns into a film, so it properly lubricates all the metal components that are spinning in the engine to stop them from wearing out more. You have an electronic gauge down there, your fuel gauge. Over there, that's like a, a petrol gauge sign. So what that means is, you go into a petrol station, if you ever forget which side your fuel cap is, the Aris reminds you. Your trip A, your mileage, your trip B, your mileage, your O meter. As we come down, we have AM and FM, or depending which part of the continent you're on. You have CD, you have your trip computer, you have your average miles an hour, average MPG, and your current MPG. And what I like about this is that some cars, the MPG, it jumps about a lot. I mean, a lot. And then it's just kind of like, how am I supposed to gauge what my actual MPG is? This is pretty consistent. It doesn't jump about a lot, which is sweet. You have mode here, you can change the clock if you want to. The part of Europe you're in for your MPG, fuel meet a bit. For us, it's MPG. For Europe, I think it's kilometers. Is when Yaris's were fitted with a sat nav system. CD. The sound system is fantastic. You have decent bass in there. You can hide that and go straight to MPG. Uh, this is how you go between tracks. If I hold it in, it skips further into the song. The aircon system on this car is really good. So I can change the phase. You don't have to worry about the aircon overheating on a really hot day. A rear heater, the rear window is fairly quick at its job. You've got your hazards, internal and external ventilation. Your temperature, the fan speed, the direction you want the vents to be blowing the air from. You can also set radio stations, scan for them, set them. Um, radio digital system the Yaris T Sports feature a sports resource system so when you're driving along she's nice and quiet and I overtake a lorry very quickly you get a nice deep noise from her you can even feel I can even feel the vibrations from the engine rocking the chassis you can't feel it on the video but I can and very few cars I've ever met have been able to do that it's a lot of power oh it's a couple of holes and spaces Cubby holds for your hand coins, your cigarette lighter, really nice, what are they called visors, you have a mirror in them as well, you can do that to block the sun so you can adjust this as well, so you can go, sun, fuck off if it's on your right hand side, I like that, that's really nice, so the sunroof, it would have been optional extra in the, the seals on these are fantastic, I've never known to be any corrosion, around these. Some cars end up getting corrosion. So are fantastic with the corrosion protection. Simple tilt system, so it's not tough. It's not difficult. You have a mirror for your passenger, little holders for you. Interior light, door on. As for maintenance of, of the throttle body, it's not very difficult. Throttle mechanical cable, so it's going to last the life of the engine essentially. The steering wheel features so cool. speed sensitive power steering. What happens is when you're at low speed, oh, the steering's really nice and light and manoeuvrable. When you're on a dual carriageway or motorway, it gets stiffer, keeps you more stable at speed because any slight movement can get a bit dangerous. That doesn't matter what car that is. At those speeds, that's all it takes for the car to stop going the wrong direction. You correct, too much correction, and you're spinning. You get really good feedback. This system back then was only fitted to like some Mercedes and BMW, luxury, expensive German machines. Expensive to, to have built. Lots of cubby holes. I see drinks. Good handbrake. A time with this car, what you'll find is in the rear drum of the rear brake, a little corrosion starts settling in inside the drum and where the shoe is. That's why the handbrake gets quite, I don't know, slack. But it holds the car. I've held it on the heels when I thought, this is scary shit. I was like, that's been really good. I have a leather gator, leather knob, and perforated as well, so it doesn't get sweaty. Same for the steering wheel. 
that's our sandbag for me because of age. That, that wear, if you like. Your your time set it, and the temperature outside. There's a little sensor outside the car, and it's pretty accurate. Clutch on the Yaris, how can I describe it? It's light. It doesn't hurt you if you're on stop-start traffic. It doesn't weigh you down quickly. It's nice and light and responsive. Gear ratio for the RST Sports, they were changed. What that means is, you have the optimum power range of whatever's going on. Revolutions are quite close together, so you're always on the power. Only did that for the Toyota Sports. And the gearbox is fantastic to use. A really well-oiled bolt-action rifle. It doesn't go into the wrong gear. It's not stiff. It's not heavy. It's not like porridge. Go into first, it goes into first. It's sharp, it isn't it isn't sloppy at all. I go first. Beautiful. Second, third, fourth, fifth. It feels like a short shifter. Pretty insane. I've met very few manufacturers that are able to do that with the gearbox. It doesn't fight you for the gear you want you I've only really met that on Mercedes Benz and Toyota's. Made me feel this nice, crisp, quick sensation. Lexus and Infinity are part of Toyota, part of the brand. Sport seats for the passengers. In the dark is pretty good for an interior light. Same good nice cloth carbon fibre panels. Signage that this is Toyota Sport. Toyota bloody cared about this, how they built this car. Dual glove box design. More space. You can fit, I don't know, your least important than the top and you're most important at the bottom nice feel to it it's not flimsy all this slides back nice comfortable seats in the back you've got a decent amount of room but i think the japanese had a, a slightly different idea on how big we europeans are because we seem to be bigger than the japanese it's really odd but for europeans it's decent room look i don't think i'm fairly tall and oh, i feel comfortable hurt me in a long journey Nice and airy, nice sounding plastics, Toyota did not skimp on them. Oh, and look! You've got, you got a cubby hole, and a cup holder for the passengers! Perforated plastics, that's fucking awesome. If your passengers want to put a drink on here, on a long journey, whatever journey you're doing, no, they have a space, they have a space to do it! Same the other side. And this is a three door car, so you'd think it'd be pretty cramped, but it, it isn't for a small car. And you still have handles either side. Doesn't feel claustrophobic. You've got a decent amount of room. Nice colour scheme. And you also have a little little space to put whatever in the back seats. Seat belts over here. Add this colour coded to the Yaris T-Sport. This is a inline traverse four cylinder engine. 1.1500 cc's. You've got your washer. Washer fluid here. Can fit HIDs to this car, the electronics, the handle, it, it's totally fine. Do not goddamn buy cheap Chinese shit. <laughs> I have to say this because the last HIDs I had decided to fry themselves. Do not buy cheap quality HIDs, get the best you can because the Chinese stuff is fucking dangerous. They are fire risk. This is a chain driven engine. We're all different. Some people for her a belt, some people for a chain. What I like about the chain is it's hardcore. It's mechanical, it's metal that's driving the camshaft, the crankshaft, everything that's going on in the engine. And what that means is reliability because chains rarely ever snap. When a belt snaps, you're damaging valves and the piston because the piston smacks into the valve at the wrong time and all sorts of damage and your engine might as well be fucked. If you're going to repair it, it's going to be really expensive. The, it will last the life of the engine. That may get a bit slack, but it will last the life of the engine. As far as I know, it's pretty much Mercedes, Toyota, build chain-driven engines these days. And there's a good reason why they're doing that. Yet the other manufacturers, Citroen, French, some Germans, they don't. And some people might say it's ecoism, fuck that. On here you have the VIN plate. Toyota engine has character. Very nice of Toyota to do that, where you have the colour code and the interior code right there. Sometimes a bastard to find on a car if you're into bodywork and paintwork and colour matching. Underneath the bottom of the bumper, these are integrated into the bumper. They are designed, whatever you want to call these, they're designed to channel the air. For aerodynamics, they're designed to channel the air down the bottom of the car and then around the body of the car. Make the aerodynamics more efficient. Don't ask me how, it works in the wind tunnel somehow. What my research told me. That's just like 
first thing that's ever going to get scratched is going to be these to give the bumper a bit of protection underneath it. These will get scratched first before well, there's any chance the bottom of the bumper will get scratched. And it's fairly tidy underneath the bumper and they do do their job. In this engine, intake, exhaust. Some engines have it the other way around. They have the exhaust here. Don't ask me why. It's really fucked up. They have the intake there. Now a performance, a powerful performance engine does not config have a configuration like that. A sports car, a high performance car has this kind of configuration. What this means is that the air going into the engine is going to be at its coolest. It, the engine is going to suck in the coolest air, which is going to be like... Where's the valve? There it, there it is. There it is. There. The cylinders, which equals more power, more responsiveness. All the piping's like nice and short, so it just goes into the box, into the front body, into the intake, straight into the, the engine, cylinders, pistons, blah blah blah. And the exhaust is right at the back of the engine, so the exhaust gases are getting out of those cylinders as quickly as possible for the next cycle. And that's what a performance engine does. It should, that kind of acts like an intercooler. It is a form of intercooler. What that means is the air is going to be more compressed, it's going to have more air in it, which is going to create a bigger bang in the... It's really nice how to have built my engine, because the French are quite predominant for it. Don't ask me why. If you had the intake system over here, then the air is going to be hotter, and it will get hot by the time it gets over here, which means hot air is going into the cylinders. Which means the air is going to be not as compressed, it's not going to have as much of a bigger bang, which means the engine is going to be tamed, it's not going to have power. Very few things go wrong with this engine. So the left hand stalk, side lights and dip beam, we we'll push this forward, main beam, and yeah it's just like you know you are our main beam. And you have the fogs here, and you've got the front fogs. Main beam will only turn on if you have the, the dip beam on. On the right hand side, this is the controls for your front windscreen wipers and your rear windscreen wipers. I'm not going to use them just because it's dust my windscreen, so if I end up pushing this up, all I'm going to do is end up scratching my windscreen. I love her too much to do that to her! I'm tired, I'm mad. But, I'm not bullshitting you, which matters. That'll flick the front windscreen wipers on for a second. That is intermittent, one down and two downs fast. This one's for the rear wiper. If I pull this back, it activates the front jetters. If I twist this down, it activates the rear jetter on the rear window. Toyota VVTi. VVTi stands for Variable Valve Timing with Intelligence. More refined and sophisticated compared to the likes of Derva cars of its class at the time. What Citroen, Honda, like VTEC, right? It sounds great. It sounds really good. And I'm sure it's a good system. But what happens is you have lift. Right, but you have lift at this certain point of the highest RPM, like 8,000 RPM. You have lift that changes the timing. There's is like at a set limit, which is shit, basically. At a set rev range, whereas VVTI, right, it's a, a constantly working system. You have is cog inside a housing. Called a vein. The hydraulic pressure from the engine is constantly changing it. And what that means is the timing is always changing. What means is the engine is always changing its variable, its timing to its conditions to best RPM of the engine. This is a quite torquey engine for a 1.5 litre petrol. Kidding you, I can let the clutch out, right? Very slowly, of course. If you do it really quick, you will stall the engine, which is only a little petrol. You'll let the clutch out and the car will move purely on engine power alone that's not touching the accelerator if you'll move with weight on board as well and then move forward i have met very few cars that have been able to do that i've only met Toyota mercedes engines that have really been able to do that where you just let the clutch out a downhill that surface is slightly hilly hill and the engine's pulling the car Without any effort. That's for passengers aboard, weight on board. A 1.5 litre VVTi engine. She is quite talky. You have spotlights in the front bumper. It's safe to do this. I'm going to show you what I mean by this car will pull away in second gear. Right, second gear, aircon on. 
Look at that. Look at that. Really nicely laid out design. Speed sensitive power steering, torquey engine. Not at the moment, but in the dark, it does illuminate pretty well in the cabin. The RST Sport, it was strengthened to make it handle better in the corners, to make the handling better. The suspension was changed for a sport suspension, yet comfortable. Brakes are fantastic. It's a really beautiful looking car. I can't fault her. Only on a few things. But then what car doesn't have a few things where you go, oh, they could have done better. Your papa. As for the mechanics of the Yaris T-Sport, she's a nice car to work on. When you undo a bolt, it doesn't want to cross thread. The bolts hardly rust. The panels come off without the clips breaking. The mechanic that has worked on my car has never, they've never gone, oh, this is shit, I really don't want to work on this car. They've been like, that's fine, I'll quit cracking with whatever I'm doing. The mechanics are really happy to work on these cars. It's a shame I do not build these cars anymore. They don't build the T-Sports. After that was the SR180s, the very special ones, and the GT86s. But there, the GT86, the only sports car to build, right, it can't hold for people. It isn't as practical as the T-Sports. It isn't an all-rounder like the Aris T-Sport. It isn't a jack of all trades, which is not what you want. This is a junior hot hatch. Back in its day, it was ahead of its competition. I know this because I have researched. I'm not bullshitting you. These cars were what made Toyota great. That's what made Mercedes great, building cars like this. And Mercedes are starting to get back into that. With the A-Class, the new one. In this world of like eco ecoism, it's a shame Toyota have gone that way. Like a lot of manufacturers. Where all they produce now is eco cars. I prefer the bigger lump of an engine. I prefer more CCs because the truth is, what we Europeans kick out is nothing compared to China and India and America. And we have the best emission laws in the world. So what we kick out doesn't really fucking matter. And for you people that go, it's an example to the rest of the world. Do you really think someone in China is looking at you and going, oh, that efficiency is amazing, all oh, their emissions. They couldn't give a toss. That sensor is pretty accurate as well. This is from factory, made in Japan. These cars were made in Japan. If you put me in a car park with all the different manufacturers of their equivalent to the T-Sport, I'd go for the T-Sport every time. But I could have a second car. I'm fucking having the Mercedes in that lot. I'm sorry. I'm having the Mercedes and the fucking Toyota. I've been in Civic Type R's. I've been in BMWs and other makes of car, and none of them have made me happy. The only car, the only manufacturer that makes me happy when I'm in that seat, makes me want to turn that key, is Toyota Mercedes. They're the only ones. There's just something about them. And we're all different in this life. What you prefer is different to what I prefer. But that's why I still have this car, that's why I keep driving her, because she's brilliant at her job. The VVTI, the variable valve timing on this engine, is always working across the entire RPM range. Anything I had to moan about the RSD Sport? Tool profile in the corner, she feels like she's leaning quite a lot. But she isn't, it's just the way the, the profile is in that car. But, but doesn't mean she has a grip in, doesn't mean she won't go faster. Lack of space for the rear passengers but the fact that Toyota when they built this car thought you know what let's think about the people that come in it let's think about the passengers put a cup holder and a cubby cubby bit in the rear body kit that was fitted to the RST Sport and the front and rear bumper really do give the RST Sport present I notice it down the road that's all oh, that is it that's the only problems that's the only annoyances I have with this car but no two manufacturers are perfect uh, something I've learned, the best time to change gears is at 3000 RPM where it's like the smoothest. You can see the engine designation is on the intake manifold. Push this in to make it tidy and you can push it out so you can reach the volume control a little bit quicker. The switches here and this they have a painted metallic coating over them. Like these, metallic grey I think. And with these switches. At the time the engine was built, it was quite advanced. I mean, you block plastics like this to keep her as light as possible for the engine. A lot of engines lose power over their lifespan, but this, this Toyota, she still feels beautifully built. Other makes a manufacturer, 
I won't tell because that's just been nasty. The hell, the rat lady, the engine's got no power, it sounds like it's gonna blow itself to pieces. The amount of times I've had people going, oh, are you selling your car? It's annoying. Is the brake fluid. No, it's the fluid getting low. Okay. It's not because you're low on fluid. Some people don't know that, some people do. It means when the fluid is getting low, it's because as the calipers, as the brake discs, the pads wear out, and the system, right, the calipers are having to travel further to put braking force down. So inside the braking system, it's increasing volume. What that means is that the fluid is gonna drop in here. So this is a good indicator of how much your discs and your pads are wearing out. So I'm a bonder, she hasn't burnt any oil. What amazes me about this car is the fact that she's done 65,000 miles, nearly 66, she's 14 years old. The engine's sweet! The powers aren't that late, the engine doesn't feel like it's lost hardly any power. This type of door catches. You have no adjustment on these, and the world of bodywork is probably a good idea. Where you never have to adjust them because these doors are adjusted perfectly in the factory. I turn it on so you don't have to fuck about with the adjustment, it's done for you. When you push that accelerator, right, it's difficult to explain, but I'll try. <laughs> it's, it's something you can only feel, but when you do, you feel the engine, you feel the vibrations and the turbulence and the bangs that are going on those cylinders making a force, a feel, a vibration. I only noticed it in Toyota Sports and Mercedes AMGs. If I had anything to add about the Toyota Yaris T-Sport, one of the most important things you can do with a pocket rocket like this is actually put decent rubber on it. So what we've got here are Toyo Proxies, I think T1Rs or something. But um absolutely superb grip pattern they're better able to handle high rpm launches on a car like this really happy with how long the tires last on a car like this it would be the fact of the modifications that we've made to its ecu and its fueling system that's made it a little bit more than what it was when we first got it that's why you're so excited about it <laughs> uh -huh. very funny actually that's true as well this is the best way to practice low speed control if you're riding a bike. Look at that, that's precision. Maybe even using the rear brake as well. Yeah, I think he did. Goodbye. Obviously the, the lenses are integrated. These are quite easy to take off if you're doing the bodywork on these cars. Really nice tight power gaps. And what it means is it's all about precision of how it's made. A really precisely built manufactured car, Toyota. Nice interior as well. One thing I like about Toyota is that when they build a car, they build a car to do its job. H IDs on this Toyota Yaris. Is that the car? I've kept the rubber seals as well. The Yaris T Sport tracks beautifully on the road. It's really precise and responsive. The car itself looks comfortable, it absorbs a lot of the bumps for you. Toyota. Mercedes and manufacturers like that. The fact that you just like shut the door. It's nice sounds you're getting when you shut the door. It's not like a conk or a bang. It's just kind of like. You see with Toyota, they just like made everything precise. They didn't slack when they designed the panels and stuff and how they all meet together and it's just white like panels. Yaris T Sport. The color name is called Caribbean Blue. Oh, metallic key. The colour is really just stand out in your face. I've seen a lot of blue cars of this colour. Of the a metallic blue, they haven't had that vibrance. No matter the situation, if you want to accelerate, if you want to get somewhere, react to a situation, the car doesn't hesitate, it just does it. It just does what you want it to do. As of things for rust, I've never known rust to ever corrode in this area. None around there. Sign of a quality car. Yaris T Sport and with Toyota. What they've done is instead of putting the speedo and the binnacle here, they put it over here. All different with our driving. I have to tilt my head down. My binnacle was over here to see the speedo and the resolutions of my engine. I have to tilt my head down a good look and then tilt up. Toyota, they've done it over there. So all I need to do is stay like this, turn my eyes. Right? 
Like this. And my eyes. All of a sudden, I can see my speedo really clearly. I can see what speed I'm doing, my revs are doing. I can see what's going on with my engine. And all of a sudden, that makes all my thought processes milliseconds quicker. So I can anticipate a little bit quicker. I can assess a little bit quicker. It makes my driving better. And that can mean the difference between seeing a, a car pulling out and braking to seeing a car pulling out and braking and then you end up hitting them. Just saying. It does happen. I love that that uh, decided to go, let's break with convention and do something different. They did this and it works. It's brilliant. They build the, the small engine Corollas and all they are is to get you about and they get you about. Yeah, they might need some service soon, but it does its job. That's what the Toyota Sport does. It's Toyota's version of Sport and it does its job really fucking well. Such a nice place to be, that driving position. And here you've got like that. Oh no, no, this camera can't zoom into it, but it illuminates. So you can see them in the dark. The Yaris T Sport engine over 3000 RPM just makes a beautiful noise. She sings to you. You could get all opinionated and hate me and all this sort of shit, but that's nothing. That's not, I don't have anything against a Fiat or a VW, I think. As a car, they, they're a car. They did do their job. Nothing. To make me want to own one, but you know, uh, it does its job. The radio quality in the RST Sport is fantastic. It's the way they position the aerial. One thing you sometimes do forget when you own machines like this is what you own. Every year, I like go into a a Vauxhall a dealer, an Orphea, or I go into a Peugeot, or I go into a VW. It reminds you of what you've got. And that actually you now appreciate what you actually own. All the little things this car does for you that the others don't. Toyota and Mercedes are the only ones that do it for me. They're the only ones that make me want to turn that key. I've been in a VW. I've been in a Sienna. I've been in all of them. Apart from supercars obviously because I'm just not that rich! And none of them have just made me want to turn the key. They've only made me turn the key if I have to. But this, I could drive to Scotland and the car wouldn't care. I wouldn't need to top up the fluids. The Yaris would not give a shit. It would do another round trip if it wanted to. For a 14 year old car and an older generation of Toyota, when you look at her, she doesn't look like she's aged at all. She still looks sharp, she still looks as, as modern as the modern cars of today. Even the interior hasn't aged. The way we... The little rascal has to it. That's awesome. This is the end of the trail for me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, kid. Yeah.